Yeah. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> so, I am Dr. Srinivas Kasha, Senior Consultant Orthopedic Surgeon from Kim's Hospital, Sikindrabad. I have my associate, uh, Dr. Uh, Rohit, uh, Consultant uh, Arthroscopy Surgeon, with me live. Today, we are going to uh, discuss about uh, sports injuries, which are very, very common. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we'll also know the strategies of treatment and uh, how to prevent them. And uh, if there is a sports injury, then how to deal with it immediately after the injury. So somebody is playing uh, cricket and suddenly had a twist of knee. Then how to deal with it so immediately? And what are the treatment strategies that are available? So I welcome you, uh, Dr. Rohit. Uh, let us just uh, start with very, very, very uh, important question. Uh, what kind of uh, sports injuries we come across most commonly uh, in the knee because you know everybody wants to know about what exactly is a sports injury Rohit hope you are available mm, I think uh, Rohit's connection is uh, Okay, uh, let me just give a brief uh, thing, uh, you know, uh, knee joint consists of thigh bone and uh, leg bone. The end of it is known as uh, knee joint and uh, this particular joint uh, gets stability by supporting soft tissues which are known as ligaments and uh, ligaments are uh, the important structures by which you get a stability of knee joint and you get a good range of movement at the knee so these are uh, uh, since they are soft tissues uh, so if it is if it is if there is a fracture if there is a break in the bone that is known as fracture but if it is if there is a break or a cut in these ligaments those are known as sprains and then sports injuries and uh, uh, these ligaments are relatively less vascular that means the blood supply to the bone although it is tough structure you got very good uh, blood supply to the bone that's the reason it uh, heals and it readily heals whereas ligaments they don't have blood supply or very meager blood supply for that reason ligaments takes long time to heal and certain ligaments like acl they don't heal at all for these reasons uh, ligament injuries are a separate entity per se and uh, if you see among all sports injuries because these injuries happen in young uh, athletes and uh, for this reason it usually affects knee shoulder and elbow and among this of course ankle joint also and uh, among this knee is very very common and uh, Rohit, can you hear me now? Yes, sir. Yeah. So we lost you actually. Uh, if uh, brand width is an issue, you can actually go on, uh, you know, um, uh, turn off your camera and then speak. So if that is an issue, am I audible to you? No, sir. Uh, yeah. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Can you hear me, sir? Is there any lag? Yes, yes. It is, it is, it is quite good now. 
yeah i was just uh, oh, giving an introduction uh, how about uh, what are all the you know uh, why uh, ligaments are important ligament injury and how is it different from a fracture and uh, what are the sports injuries so you yes, can sir. answer what exactly is a sports injury and uh, where do you get these sports injuries yes sir so uh, basically sports injuries uh, especially around the knee joint are common because nowadays uh, people have become very health conscious and they have started working out uh, and started doing sports to keep themselves fit to reduce their body weight and all so everyone nowadays is into the sports and or in some form of physical activity to keep themselves fit so along with this comes the injuries so people need to know exactly how they can avoid these and if in case they encounter with one of these injuries and how to get themselves out of it or how to consult a doctor and what will be the treatment things so mostly uh, knee injuries are common that we see in our regular day to day practice and these are, happen when a person is playing a particular sports or when they are training in a gym there might be some sudden jerky movements or some twisting injury of the knee that will cause damage to the ligaments or the muscles around the knee joint usually the commonly affected here the ligaments that are the supporting structures for the joint are usually affected and when this happens they have to be taken proper treatment otherwise they may cause long term implications for the patient got it rahim uh, that's very uh, informative and uh, uh, can you just uh, tell us what kind of uh, um, sports injuries happen in uh, and around the knee yeah yes so basically uh, uh, i have a small model of the knee joint with me i'll try to uh, demonstrate that so this is your knee uh, this is how a knee joint looks so this is your thigh bone and this is the leg bone and it has as you can see some structures on the inner side and outer side these are the ligaments there's one on the inner side there's one on the outer side and the white thing that we can see here at the end of the thigh bone that is the cartilage and the structure that you can see here in the front this is your acl or your anterior cruciate ligament and there's one at the back that is your pcl or your posterior cruciate ligament so these are the main uh, supporting structures of the knee joint and apart from these there is something called a uh, meniscus you can see it here it's a cushion like structure between your thigh bone and leg bone which helps to reduce the stress that is being transferred when you are walking jumping or running from your thigh bone to your leg bone it's basically like a cushion between your two bones looks like something so like a wall all these head, structures right? are at risk of yes sir so it is like a washer as you can see here so there are two there's one on the uh, inner side and there's one on the outer side so these right. are the uh, more common four to six structures that get injured when there is a sporting injury there are other injuries as well but these are the most common ones that usually we see in the day to day practice got it so so what what is uh, the most commonly affected uh, part in this which one uh, do you get very frequently uh, when you deal with this yes sir. statistically speaking the most common ligaments that get affected are your acl that is your anterior cruciate ligament or your meniscus that is the washer that is between your thigh bone and the leg bone these are the most commonly affected ligaments because they are very dynamic that is whenever you are doing walking or in running or jumping or into any sports in that matter even when you are dancing 
so there is a lot of strain on these ligaments and even a minor imbalance can put a normal stress on them and they may get injured got it so do you think all the sports injuries require surgery because you know most of the times you have a sports injury and uh, 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 there is a uh, feeling that every sport injury requires a surgery is it uh, so yeah among the general people that every sports injury that every sports injury requires a surgery not all sports injuries require surgery a few of them can be treated without surgery as well with proper care rest and physiotherapy afterwards they can get back to their original playing condition without any surgery but there are few injuries that will definitely require some got it so i got it see i, I can give one uh, example uh, there is uh, a relative of mine who had uh, uh, acl injury hmm? and uh, he uh, is there any way by which you can actually treat this acl injury without surgery Yes, sir. Uh, can I know what is the age of this uh, particular uh, age? Is around thirty-five year old. Thirty-five year old. He had injury around two months back. Uh, he is quite active. Guy. He wants to again go back to, you know, he is a schedule player. He wants to Sports. play sports, and yes. uh, preferably he wants to avoid surgery. So, what do we suggest? Uh, yes. Sir. and if it all if he so it doesn't undergo surgery what are the risks because so if that is risky then he may have to reconsider his decision yes sir in this scenario uh, it's a male 35 years old that is uh, quite young and uh, active age and he is a occasional uh, i think he is a weekend sports player he is not a professional level but yeah uh, for his uh, leisure or his hobby to play a sport so these people actually uh, they need to undergo they need to meet orthopedic surgeon especially a sports uh, physician and get it evaluated it could be a minor injury or a major injury which we cannot uh, tell directly without seeing the patient and examining the patient and if required we will even have to get some tests like an x ray or a mri scan to evaluate exactly what injury is is he having and is it a complete tear or is it a partial tear some of the complete tears may be treated without surgery if the patient is not having any instability instability is like when the patient is walking on a normal level ground if he takes a sudden left or a right turn if he feels that his joint is giving away that he is losing balance that is what is instability so if the patient is having instability whether it is a complete tear or a partial tear he may require a surgery so to be even more specific we need to examine the patient individually and get further evaluations like x ray and mri to be more specific yes uh, there is as you said sir he wants to avoid surgery many people uh, who come to our opd ask this is there any way that they can avoid the surgery so we always tell them after examining them and after looking at their reports we give them the options whether it is surgery or without surgery it can be treated so if it is a complete tear with proper instability history it definitely requires surgery and if they continue to play without getting surgery or continue to do their activities without getting the surgery they are at a risk of injuring the other ligaments or other cartilage in the joint so they are inviting trouble in future by not getting the surgery done so this is what we tell them that they have this risk of damaging other structures in the knee joint i got it i uh, got it now uh, to summarize i can tell 
see if there is a acl injury and unless you examine and then know the history whether what kind of problem if they are suffering from instability or you know is, is it just a uh, an injury and if somebody is not that active in sports probably there is a chance that they may get away without surgery right yes. and uh, sometimes there will be a role uh, for a professional surgery. player also uh if there if there is a an instability he might require surgery got oh uh, so that's quite yes. informative and uh, and it is always individualized yes. that you mentioned see some it depends on uh, you know yes, active sir. person but he wants to give up uh, sports exactly. then the answer is there right so yes sir <clears throat> So, so the same injury has goes... happened in a person who is above fifty or fifty-five. Then we can advise them that surgery is not not mandatory for them. We can try without surgery, and we can ask them to use a brace or something when they are playing, so that the further damage to the other structures can be minimized. This can be tried if the person is little elderly, and if they are not very active into sports or any other. uh physical activities got it can you tell who is more uh, is there somebody who is prone for sports injuries is it uh, you know uh, is there any condition which in which they are more prone yes sir so coming to uh, the statistically speaking uh, both males and females are equally predominantly uh, affected but females have a slighter edge over males but by being uh, more prone to injuries and in that case again there are people with uh, who are born with ligament laxity ligament laxity is something where uh, the person is having loose or lax joints from birth so these people are at a higher risk compared to the other normal people of having sports injuries and people who don't warm up properly before any sports or any physical activity are at a higher risk of injuring their ligaments or muscles during the activity excellent so that means uh, one should uh, actually prepare the muscles before you actually strain them right so uh, unless yes, exactly. you do that a sudden sudden jerky kind of a movement can obviously injure any ligament so this is a very inf- uh, uh, very informative mm-hmm. especially for young athletes who wants to play or occasional players in fact a person like me who wants to play uh, once in a week uh, unless i do proper uh, uh, work up before uh, actually warm up. landing into yeah warm up before actually going ahead with uh, you know badminton then obviously there is a risk i completely got is there any way we can use uh, some kind of braces or knee caps like that so that injuries can be prevented is it is there any thing like that yes there is a role for braces there are lots of protective braces depending upon the sport or the training that or the activity that you are going to do there are many braces that can protect your knees or your elbows for that matter or for your ankle depending upon the sport that you are playing they do help to a certain level but as i said earlier it is the proper warm up that will protect you in the long term from all these sports injuries than the brace so yes braces do help to a certain level yes got it so let us actually take somebody somebody has a question Uh, let us actually answer that question before we uh, go further yeah there
So now I can ask. Uh, see, somebody has. Uh, there was a question popped up. So he has an elbow pain, uh, saying that he is. Yeah, I am 22 year old tennis player, but I have frequent elbow pain. It really interferes with my game. I don't want to give it up. How can I manage it? So he doesn't want to give up any game. So what can we really offer to him? So Rohit, can we? I think we have lost Rohit. See, the thing is, a 22-year-old tennis player, uh, we need to actually uh, examine this patient, first of all and then find out the reason. Sometimes it can be a, just a tennis elbow kind of a situation where you have got mild inflammation uh, around the muscles and uh, that could lead to uh, tennis elbow pain in which uh, when they play, especially the back uh, hand kind of a movement or whenever you open up locks, when you carry some weights, they have this kind of pain. So you need to find out uh, by examining them. And once you find out a reason, and then you have got a, a way to deal with it. It depends on uh, what condition uh, you are suffering with. And I'm sure you are going to uh, have a, you know, uh, since you are 22 year old, it has to be uh, further evaluated and then proper decision can be given. So, and uh, um, yeah, so there is another question. Hello, sir. Does all ACL injuries require replacement? Yeah, there is another question. Uh, so, Rohit is not there. Uh, ACL injuries actually doesn't require replacement surgery. I can actually elaborate on what exactly is a replacement surgery and what exactly is ACL, if there is an ACL injury, what we actually need to do. So knee replacement surgery is something where the joint is completely damaged because of uh, various reasons, either it could be aging or because of injury or because of uh, uh, rheumatoid arthritis kind of a pictures. So wherever there is the joint which is damaged, then the right way is to go ahead with replacement surgery. And ACL uh, injury is something to deal with, which usually happen in young people. And it actually causes, uh, causes instability, the movement, uh, irregular movement at the joint, which actually over a period of time damages the cartilage, which is a protective cushion, covers the end of the bone. And that has to be protected. And uh, in ACL, uh, uh, these, uh, this movement is going to be irregular and uh, it further damages the cartilage or the washers, which are known as menisci inside the joint. So to protect that, you have to do undergo, uh, you have to offer them a surgery known as ACL reconstruction. As I told in the beginning of the this session, uh, uh, ligaments they don't they hardly have any potential to heal and ACL is one ligament which actually doesn't heal so is there any way by which we actually can address this irregular movement so the movement should be in between the bo uh, thigh bone and knee bone in a specified way but if there is any uh, ligament injury this ACL injury it moves in an irregular fashion and damages rest of the uh, structures. So that has to be prevented, that can be prevented by ACL reconstruction surgery. Reconstruction surgery is something we take a ligament kind of a uh, structure from, uh, you know, uh, from other part of the knee joint that is known as, you know, tendons. So the muscle ends are uh, very thick and uh, those uh, tight rope kind of structures are known as 
tendons and uh, we take those tendons and uh, uh, make it something like a ligament kind of a strength and keep it in place of an acl that is known as acl reconstruction surgery it is not same as a replacement surgery so in this the tendon which is harvested taken from the other part of the knee is kept in place of this ligament area through a keyhole surgery so uh, uh, we have lost you uh, rohit in between so there was a question uh, does all acl yes, knees there are some technical issues yeah so it's okay uh, uh, the question is have you got the question does all acl injuries uh, require replacement i was just uh, uh, you know clarifying that replacement surgery uh, is no. completely different uh, from acl reconstruction yes not all so acl can you elaborate on what there exactly are, uh, acl instances uh, right. yeah can you elaborate on what acl exactly is, is your acl reconstruction yeah ac acl reconstruction that is your anterior cruciate ligament that uh, it is not required at all the times as i said earlier there are some instances where we can avoid the surgery but there are many uh, other instances which will require the surgery so we have to evaluate the patient first take proper his uh, proper history and do examination and find out uh, investigations and if it is uh, really uh, in stable knee with uh, ligament laxity and patient is having uh, instability while walking they definitely require surgery what we do in acl reconstruction is the damaged acl part is removed and in its place a, a new ligament and we reattach it in its same place so that it performs the functions of the damaged acl ligament so basically we are reconstructing the tissue that is got damaged with a new tissue from patient's own uh, body so it is fixed in in its uh, original place with the hand help of screws and buttons which are usually in titanium uh, material and uh, they are very inert and they don't require to be removed usually so this is uh, the acl reconstruction surgery this is usually done through a keyhole or a arthroscope we call it in medical terminology it's a keyhole surgery it is not done by opening uh, the joint fully which was done 15 20 years back now with the latest advancements we can do the same surgery with just minimal incision which will reduce the blood loss and the patient will be back to his uh, f- uh, back to his activities as early as possible so initially patient will have to use a brace after the surgery along with a walker and they will have to go through three of rehabilitation program that is a physiotherapy which is usually around 3 to 6 months depending upon the thing level of the patient if he is a, a regular uh, patient with not much uh, into professional sports usually a 3 to 6 month therapy is sufficient but those who are at light level sports people they require around 9 months physiotherapy so that they can back, get back to their competition yes sir Mm-hmm. i think uh, rohit again we lost you yeah so that is the procedure of acl reconstruction and uh, i am just finding if there is any other question uh, before that so <clears throat> let me check uh, whether he is available uh, rohit are you there yes sir can you hear me sir yes yes 
so we got uh, got to know about uh, yes, uh, you know yes yes acl reconstruction surgery can you tell uh, how long does it take to get back to sports after the surgery acl reconstruction yes sir usually after the surgery patient require minimum of 3 to 6 months of physiotherapy to get back to most of their activities but if the patient wants to get back to sporting activity we give it around 9 months time from the surgery so that their ligament is completely uh, you know uh, completely uh, completely tuned to the uh, pitu okay. acl and they can get back to their uh, sporting activities got it so in how long does it take for the we have another let question us, let us take uh, this question i am a state level football player and had a very bad fall while running and hurt my knee i got slightly twisted i was taking physiotherapy is that enough to recover mr mohammed yes mr mohammed shah yeah football player which we call in medical terminology as an elite athlete so you had a in- got when your knee got twisted and you are undergoing physiotherapy right now so if you are undergoing physiotherapy after uh, consulting a orthopedic doctor or a sports doctor they will evaluate you periodically and tell you if that is sufficient or you may require any other so you need to consult the doctor the sports doctor or the orthopedic doctor and take their opinion resume your activity or not only after they give you clearance it will be advisable for you to get back to your sports yeah dr rohit uh, yeah uh, 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 so let us say uh, there is uh, he has uh, he, he has not consulted uh, any doctor let us say uh, if uh, a doctor is consulted what are the regular investigations that are advised is it uh, you know once uh, we meet a sports specialist or an orthopedic surgeon can you elaborate on that yes sir so surgeon with your uh, injury so first they'll take a proper history of how the incident happened was it a direct contact or was there any twisting uh, that was involved or there was a abnormal landing position so this will give the doctor an idea of the amount of energy that has happened and the probable ligaments or the tissues that got damaged and after that they will examine your knee and check ligaments that have that i have told before and after that if the doctor feels it requires an x ray or a mri scan these are the usual tests that are done x ray will tell about the bones quality and the bone status the mri scan will give idea about the ligaments and other status so if there is any ligament injury that will be picked up by the mri scan even the meniscal injury which i was talk mri scan in rare cases when there is lot of swelling in the knee after the injury even an ultra to pick up the ligament injuries got it so uh, the x ray so these are the will only tell about common bone. investigations that are done the x ray is going to tell only thing only yes, about sir. bone but most of the times it is clinical examination and mri which will tell give good information about uh, sports injury right sometimes uh, if there is a bad injury you can still see yes exactly on x ray uh okay got it uh there yes, is another the question injury... from anand 
ligament, we can make it out even in the X-ray. Got it. So when the injury is too grotesque, that multiple ligaments are affected, then even it can be seen on uh, X-ray, right? So there is another question from Dr. Anand. Uh, sorry, Anand Alluru. Yes. Uh, we have lost. Yeah. Uh, does partial thickness, high thickness, complete thickness, ACL tear require ACL reconstruction surgery or should we evaluate based on case to case? So I think it is answered, right? So it is all the time case to case basis and it depends on yes, the personality of the Always patient. Always case to case basis. Yeah. And their activity. And if somebody is... Yes, uh, we, you know, occasional player, if they are yes. ready to give up, then that also influences. It, it's uh, completely depend, uh, it depends on the patient's alone. profile. Yes. Okay. Right. So, <clears throat> so I just exactly. wanted to... So, so that uh, is where we tell the patients that we treat the patients, not the reports, not the MRI reports. So there is a question from Muhammad Shah. I am consulting a sports medicine doctor. How can I consult you? So at the end of this session, you have uh, the number displayed. You can call on that number and take an appointment. That's easy way. And uh, online consultation, as previously mentioned, is uh, difficult because it requires an examination. And most of the time, sports injuries require proper clinical examination to find out what exactly is the cause. So first, you require Very true. a thorough clinical examination. Thereafter, for the follow-up, probably, yes, online consultation can be done. Okay. So let us actually uh, go ahead with uh, another question no no this is not a question right so in acl injuries any bed, re bed rest is re uh, needed after surgery because you know more uh, immediately after surgery most of them are uh, working uh, young age uh, breadwinners and uh, they want to get back to the work as soon as possible yeah, I so think I lost your surgery again, is done yeah. and on uh, bed for a while, it's going to affect their you know uh, uh, work uh, place. So, is there a need for bed rest? Sorry, sir. Uh, I I didn't get the question properly. There are some uh, uh, network I, issues I, I, from I, my end. Yeah, yeah. I will tell you again. So, is any bed rest required after the surgery? Because most of the people are young uh, in their, you know, uh, so most of them are working people in that age group and they are the breadwinners for the family. And if they go on rest or bed rest for a long time, that would affect their income, right? So, is there uh, actually after ACL reconstruction, is there any need of bed rest? No, sir, absolutely not. There is no role of bed rest after ACL reconstruction surgery. Actually, you will be after the surgery, the patient will be made. to walk on the next day help of a brace and a walker from the next day after the surgery and he will be taught physiotherapy Rohit, uh, I think we, are lo we have lost you. See, the question is uh, whether is there any need of bed rest after surgery. So, no bed rest after ACL reconstruction surgery. The reason is it's quite a minimally invasive surgery uh, with a small keyhole incision. The surgery is going to be performed and uh, the in 
the cut itself is not more than you no know, uh, puncture of uh, uh, wound that's it and there is uh, no need immediately after surgery the patient will be made to walk with the help of a walker on first uh, day after surgery and uh, they'll be able to walk with the help of a brace and there is a specific physiotherapy program So, uh, have I gone on mute or what? Rohit, can you hear me? Okay. So, <clears throat> right. So, that is about, uh, I don't know uh, where my mic went on mute. Uh, so one thing I can tell is there is no need of any bed rest after surgery. It is rehabilitation program which starts from day one and patient will be able to walk with the help of a support and the brace. So any specific diets after ACL surgery. Uh, so let us actually take this first question. What options are there for recurrent shoulder dislocation and uh, rotator cuff injuries in sports person? So, as previously mentioned, we are actually discussing about knee joint today, uh, Mr. Anand. But uh, I can give you a, just a glimpse of uh, an overview. So recurrent dislocation and rotator cuff injuries also need evaluation by a sports injury doctor or an orthopedic doctor wherein actually uh, what kind of uh, how much thickness is, uh, of rotator cuff is gone and how disabling is that and the age uh, will dictate uh, treatment strategies whereas in recurrent dislocation which is common in younger people have got, uh, if you get an MRI done, you will come to know uh, what is the cause and uh, that can be handled. So both uh, rotator cuff as well as uh, recurrent shoulder dislocation can be handled uh, with uh, arthroscopic <laughs> rotator cuff repair or recurrent dislocation reconstruction surgery. It is quite possible and uh, sometimes there are, if it is <clears throat> the tissues are uh, damaged to a significant extent, open surgeries are needed. So that is uh, about that question. And uh, since we have uh, lost Rohit again, so I want to summarize today's uh, session. So we have actually discussed about uh, sports injuries. Uh, where are they? Uh, so when are they called sports injuries? What are actually bone injury that is known as fracture and then when it is uh, ligament soft tissue injuries then uh, how it is going to be uh, presented to the patient and how uh, commonly it is seen in various types of injuries uh, uh, and uh, what are the structures that are commonly involved and the treatment strategies and what is the rehabilitation program uh, like uh, from when they can actually walk and when they can do physiotherapy. Uh, I'm just summarizing, Dr. Rohit. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so, so if you want, you can add. So I was just summarizing uh, knee injuries are uh, very commonly affected in sports personnel. And most common injury that is seen is ACL injury. And if untreated, not in everybody, untreated and the knee is 
not stable then it can further damage the rest of the structures in the knee uh, including menisci which are known as wa washers and that can lead to pain and uh, which might also need to early arthritis in the long run long term long long term effects and surgery is quite uh, safe and can be done through uh, minimal invasive arthroscopy keyhole surgery and uh, which doesn't require open procedure and uh, post operatively they can walk from second day and they need not be on bed and they'll be having a physiotherapy program for about 6 uh, 6 weeks to 2 months which uh, ac actually prepares the knee to take up the loads in the future and uh, uh, this rehabilitation is very important for all the sports personnel to get back to their activity in the future uh, please add if you have anything more to summarize because it's already 40 Six minutes. We may have to close it. Yes, uh, you have covered. The only thing uh, that I would like to uh, add up on this is, of uh, at the site of injury or sometimes when you get injured while you know playing a sport in the field or when you are in a gym and you get injured, many of them don't know exactly what they need to do. uh the first aid i'm talking about the first aid ah, part that's an that excellent thing, yeah, thing that, Rohit, uh, yeah. i wanted to stress upon yeah please go on. so initially uh, when you suffer an injury it is best to give a break to whatever you are doing and put your leg or your uh, injured part at rest do not apply any ointments or any gels yes you can use uh pain relieving sprays to really relieve the pain or you can apply reducing the swelling you can take help from your closest person or you can call upon a doctor till you uh, you know till you uh, are better i would advise not to play on the injured limb because that can even further aggravate the things which are already injured so many people uh, try to uh, uh, neglect the pain and continue to play through it which is very harmful because even if it was a partial tear or a sprain that may become a complete tear or a complete uh, sprain that will cause a lot of uh, difficulty or problems for them in the long run so it is best to stop the play or the activity that you are doing and take help of whoever is close by or consult a doctor then further proceed the basic thing that you can do is stop the workout or the stop the play that's very important information rohit uh with i think he, we have lost uh, <clears throat> so again the same thing uh, <clears throat> if uh, uh, there is an injury so one need to stop playing first and uh, just uh, be safe uh, be in a safe uh, place and then uh, take somebody's help that is the first thing and put some ice which can be done don't rub or anything just uh, or put ointment and massages do not do those things you can just apply ice you can even use sprays and then get back to oh, the doctor as soon as possible and uh, uh, where they can actually uh, put some brace if, if at all if there is a a uh, helping person or the physiotherapist nearby that would also uh, help during transit to the hospital and uh, that is very very uh, informative uh, and uh, 
so these are the with, uh, important points uh, one ha- one need to know in dealing with sports injuries and uh, hope we have uh, covered everything in today's awareness program on uh, sports injuries especially around the knee so thank you one and all and uh, uh, we'll see you soon with some other interesting topic thank you